So we're here in the historic town of Haverday Grace, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore. And there's a bunch of great antique shops and collectible shops here. So let's go explore and see what kind of cool stuff we can find today. So our first stop is here at Washington Street Books and Music. And right when you walk in, you're greeted with this small glass display with a bunch of great silver and bronze age Marvel books, some old ASM, some uh, Fantastic Four, a little McFarlane Spider-Man, some gold key Disney, and an Avengers annual. You know, it's really cool to see these books. Uh, the prices are a little steep, but still, Really interesting and really fun books. Uh, also a little Tomb of Dracula there with a little blade. You know, not too bad. But also this next room here, there is a wall of comics. There's walls, there's shelves. I mean, there's books everywhere. Uh, this place was so cool. There was all different types of collectibles, antiques, a lot of pop culture stuff, a lot of toys, uh, trading cards. But they did have quite a few comic books. Uh, as you see, I'm just kind of scanning through and seeing what they have. There's a lot of modern stuff and like 90s random stuff, a lot of independent books, you know, a lot of interesting uh, comics, but nothing really that I wanted to grab, uh, you know, nothing that I really needed or wanted uh, on this wall here, but still some cool stuff, a little Iron Man action. You know, for seventeen dollars, well, the price is a little high on some of the books, but you know it is an antique shop. We see a little astonishing tales. Kazar, uh, you know, there's there's some interesting stuff here on the wall, but nothing really that I wanted. But still, really cool to see all these books out on display. They also had a bunch of these vintage Pokemon cards. Always fun to see those. Those are the uh, the Pokemon made by the Tops Card Company. Uh, they had some toys everywhere bunch of cool stuff all different random toys and models and you know all different cool stuff here's a really cool venom statue some halo figures i uh, got a little bit of hot wheels cars here some older stuff like mid 90s stuff i uh, got a bunch of star wars you got books you got dvds vhs tapes you know all different really cool stuff some star trek some star wars a lot of these kenner products you know, it's really fun to see this kind of stuff. They also have more books here. There's a Werewolf by Night book. But something was going on with that cover. I don't know if it was extremely sun faded or that was like a reproduction cover for some reason. I'm not really sure. Uh, some Walking Dead books. A lot of like random 90s, early 2000s, you know, just kind of random stuff here. Uh, but also some cool books, some X-Men you know, a lot of Marvel and a lot of independent. There's a little DC mixed in there as well. But here we have just so much cool stuff. It's just, it's like a museum. It's so fun to just walk through and look at all these different things. Uh, here's a little display of some Transformers, some Power Rangers. Really cool to see that. Uh, some WWF wrestling figures. I mean, they had every every type of collectible you could think of uh, lots of action figures lots of toys and here we have a couple more cool comics in a glass display we got some older asm and some captain america some astonishing tales a little fantastic four we got green lantern some incredible hulk you know the prices were a little steep a little more than i'm used to paying but that's kind of typical when you're at an antique shop as compared to, you know, a straight up comic book shop or a comic book convention or something like that. You know, I buy a lot of my books at like flea markets and things like that. We got a little ASM, some great Carnage covers. Uh, here's X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, uh, second appearance of Gambit uh, or third appearance, I should say. Uh, here's some really cool uh, retro Nintendo Power magazines. Those are really fun to see. I mean, there is so much stuff, some Hulk Hogan, a lot of wrestling, really, really cool. And as you see, this place just goes on and on. Here's some old G.I. Joe action figures. This was really cool. Check out this older uh, Batman playset. I thought that was super cool, still in the box. Here we got some uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and uh, mixed in with a little G.I. Joe as well. And check out this uh, Anakin statue. How cool is that? Young Anakin Skywalker. Really, really cool. 
And what else? There's like random antiques up on the shelves, some old glass bottles. But as you see, there's toys and books and stuff everywhere. Here's a really cool glass display with some, uh, some vintage Star Wars toys mixed in with a little G.I. Joe, as you see there. But some great, great older action figures. There's State Puff Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. And just a lot of great uh, vintage toys here. That big Batman uh, figure there. Some uh, There's the Ewok playset down at the bottom. I thought that was really cool. And as you see, there's books, there's toys. I mean, there's stuff everywhere. These are really cool. They were extremely expensive. I guess those uh, are pretty collectible. There's like a Sid Vicious action figure. Some uh, wrestling stuff. But uh, there was like $100 a piece. I'm not sure how collectible those are. This is really cool. This uh, bat copter. That looked pretty old. That might have been a reproduction. Not sure. Some fast, uh, Fantastic Four action figures. More Batman, Superman, and DC stuff here. Really cool. Got a Lex Luthor action figure. Some X-Men down there. Some more Batman from the Batman movie. I mean, there's just toys and collectibles everywhere. This was probably the coolest collectibles uh, store that I've ever been to, honestly. Um, it was like going to a convention. But here they also had all of these costumes that were used in the, in the actual movies. Uh, this one was uh, Ethan Waite's uh, outfit from Beautif uh, Beautiful Creatures. Really cool. They had it on display. Here are more uh, outfits and costumes used in the movie, uh, in the Beautiful Creatures movie, by the different actors and actresses. And these are the actual uh, costumes used in those productions. So they're all on display in these glass uh, cases. So this place was technically a museum. I mean, there was so much cool. This, uh, this piece was awesome. This is the outfit from the Carrie movie from 2013. That was really cool. The bloody uh, prom dress, kind of interesting there. Really cool, though. They And they had boxes of stuff just beyond all the other collectibles. Here's that Anakin Skywalker uh, statue. Really cool. Supposedly, it's very rare. And here are more costumes from the Hunger Games movies. Uh, really interesting to see these original movie costumes on display. There's a QR code if you want to pause it and scan. I'm not sure where that'll bring you, but might uh, give you some more information. But yeah, these are the actual costumes used in the movies. So very cool to see this at just a random antique and collectibles uh, shop here in Haverhill Grace, uh, Maryland. Uh, it's right off of I-95, a little north of Baltimore. Uh, if you're ever in the area, definitely check this place out. And the owners were super nice, and he was more than happy uh, to have me film and take pictures. He said, go ahead, have fun. Yeah, we, we didn't end up buying anything here, but they were so nice and very informative. The guy was uh, letting us know all different stuff. But here we are moving on to another huge antique store. Uh, here we got a whole bunch of really cool silver coins, some uh, Walking Liberty half dollars, some Mercury dimes. Uh, nothing too crazy or collectible, just basically junk silver coins, but still really cool. Price is a little too much uh, compared to my local coin shop. But this antique shop was huge. Uh, I think it was three stories, and there was just stuff everywhere collectibles, antiques, toys, records, books, movies, and as you'll see here in a minute, a whole bunch of comic books. But we got some old uh, die-cast cars there, some really cool memorabilia, and some great antiques. Here's a couple random Star Trek comic books at the back of this display. But there was just stuff everywhere. All right, so here is a huge display of comic books. And just right off the bat, it looks like they had some great stuff. So, you know, I wasn't going to go and dig completely through everything. But yeah, you know, I did. I went through most of the books here. And there was some really cool stuff. And the prices were not bad at all. 
Uh, at the end of the video, I'll show you all the stuff that I bought, and I got some great deals. I was really happy about these purchases. Some cool books and some very affordable and reasonable prices. So as you see here, everything is organized and labeled, all alphabetical and, and by uh, title. So really, really cool. They had Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, Copper Age, and Modern stuff all mixed in. And then here, this is the other side of this display. So even more comics to check out. A lot of cool horror stuff. But look what I found for four bucks. Can you believe that? That's awesome. All right, everybody. So we're back home now, and that was so much fun. Uh, those antique shops were amazing. Uh, and that one store that I took most of the footage at, all of those uh, costumes from different movies and different uh, retro video games, toys, trading cards, uh, you know, so much cool stuff. Lots of Star Wars, lots of comics. I mean, that was amazing. Uh, and then the other antique shops with all those other comics. So I ended up buying some books from that last antique shop and they had what, like 15, 20 short boxes worth of stuff. And I found a couple cool books at some pretty good deals. So the first one here, you saw it on the video. It's that classic Jim Lee cover from X-Men volume two, issue number 11 for $4. That was a great deal. Issue number 11, it's in high grade, near mint copy, four bucks, not too bad at all for X-Men number 11. I love the cover. That's that classic 90s X-Men, can't go wrong with that. So for four bucks, definitely couldn't pass that up. Also for $5, I got G.I. Joe issue number 53 with the 25th anniversary border featuring Snake Eyes, such a cool book. Uh, for five bucks, I had to grab it. I actually don't have this one in my collection yet. And I was just at that Comic-Con, uh, what, a week or two ago. And they were selling this book for 20 bucks. And I got a nice high-grade near-mint copy for five bucks. Can't go wrong. Really nice. Love that cover. Love the, uh, the 25th anniversary border. I collect that. Uh, all the books that look like that. So really cool. All right, then we got some cool horror stuff. So I did find this one here. This is Giant Size Werewolf, issue number five. So cool. Look at this one. Love the cover. It's in decent shape. It's like a mid-grade book. Uh, not too bad. You know, pretty excited about this one. I don't have this uh, in my Werewolf by Night collection, so I was really excited to pick that up. I believe this was $6, so... Not too bad. Uh, usually at antique shops or comic shows, anywhere I go, uh, Werewolf by Night books, regardless if it's, uh, you know, what grade it's in or, you know, what kind of shape the book is in, I'm always seeing it $10 or more per book for just, you know, run filler, just regular old books. You know, not, of course, not any of the keys, but just the regular old Werewolf by Night run fillers. I'm looking at $10, $15 a book. And I got this cool one here that I don't have in my collection yet for $7 or six or seven, something like that. I did get one more Werewolf by Night book. That is issue number 24. I don't think I have this one in my collection yet. Uh, it's a pretty cool book. Sorry for the glare here. My lighting's a little weird. Um, but it's in kind of rough shape. On the back cover, it is missing a corner. So it's kind of a lower grade book, but this was $4, so... Uh, for maybe maybe five dollars something like that four or five bucks for werewolf 24 and i believe i needed this one for my run so definitely excited about that the front cover looks decent i mean actually no it's got a lot of staining in the trade dress but i could probably clean that up give it a press give it a cleaning not too bad two more books here i love these bronze age horror books here we have where creatures roam number seven Nice little Bronze Age 15 cent book, really cool cover. See if I can get this not to glare on you, but look at the, the glob there, really cool book. Really excited about this one, I love the cover. This one's really, uh, really decent shape. It's got some fading and a little staining going on, but uh, the spine looks really good. Inside the books looks really good. Really excited about this one. And this was $6, I believe as well. So Where Creatures Roam number seven in a pretty decent shape. And last book that I picked up here, Where Monsters Dwell, issue number two. Uh, as you see, it does have some uh, color breaking creases here. Um, 
that's pretty much it though the spine's okay and i mean it's got some spine take it's it's like a mid-grade book but really cool where monsters dwell number two i love the cover with like this castle and the uh what is this thing the spore a little crazy monster there on the front really cool book and issue number two I think I might have issue number one in my uh, collection. I got to double check. Uh, all my horror books are packed away right now. So I got to pull them out and check out uh, what issues I need for these series. But really cool. And I think I got this one for $7. Six or $7. So under $10 for all of these books. Not too bad at all. Uh, I got all of these, I think, for like 35 bucks, something like that. Not too bad. I love my Bronze Age horror where monsters dwell, where creatures roam, you know, kind of creative with the titles, right? Uh, werewolf by Night 24, Giant Size Werewolf number five, and of course, these two these two really cool books here, G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, if, issue 53, 25th Anniversary Board with Snake Eyes, really nice high-grade book, and X-Men Volume 2, issue number 11, classic, iconic Jim Lee cover, Got it for su such a great deal, I think. So not too bad at all at those antique shops. Really fun. I hope you enjoyed checking out the video. All those really cool uh, toys and comics and video games and trading cards and all those uh, amazing studio props and those outfits used in the actual movies from... Uh, you know, from The Hunger Games and a couple other really int uh, interesting movies. So really fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely check out that little historic area. I'll leave the link down below in the description. Really cool place to visit if you're in the Baltimore, Maryland area. And uh, it's right off of I-95. So that's the video for today. Smash that like button if you enjoyed what you saw. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos just like this, where I find all different cool comic books. And please ring that notification bell so you can see when I upload my next video. And as always, have a great day.